Hey there, I'm Josh, and today I'm going to be just joshing around, building a chest of drawers. This is actually the second project I'm working on in an effort to upgrade my kids' rooms. This piece is gonna be going in my boys' room. I'd like to build them a dresser, but they don't have quite enough space for it. So I figured I'd make them something that has a smaller footprint, but can accomplish the same thing. I was a little nervous about this project going into it because I'd never built anything this elaborate before. But luckily I had a point of reference in the furniture that my wife and I have in our room. So largely I just wanted to mimic that just making some modifications to make it more suitable for our needs. But still, it was a lot of work to get everything just right. Let me show you what I mean. For this video, I'm attempting to streamline everything by grouping it together in a way that makes the most sense for viewing. So the order in which you're seeing it is not exactly the same order in which I perform the work. Regardless, the first thing I'm doing here is breaking down both half inch and quarter inch plywood in order to build the drawers. If you happen to see my last video where I built the beds, then you'll notice this process is pretty much the same that I use there. I'm first cutting down all the half inch plywood to the correct dimensions. Then I set up the dado stack and the table saw to cut all the slots for the drawer bottoms. Once those were done, I added all of my extra necessary chippers to the stack to cut all of my rabbits on the ends of the boards. I'm once again using single rabbit joinery for the construction of the drawers. The four panels of the drawer box are assembled around the drawer bottom with the two ends sandwiched between the two sides. A generous amount of glue is applied to all the rabbits, and then some brad nails are driven in to secure it all. The construction process for these drawers is very simple, and once the glue is dried, they're really sturdy. Once the drawers were all assembled, I popped the quarter inch roundover bit into the router and rounded over all the top edges and the outside corners. This is of course to help mitigate the potential for any splinters, while also making it look a little nicer and more finished. Next up, I got out the orbital sander to get everything nice and smooth. And here's the stack of finished drawer boxes, consisting of two smaller ones for the top and five larger ones for the main body of the chest. After the drawers were done, I broke down a sheet of 3 quarter inch red oak plywood. I'll be using this for both the sides and the top of the chest of drawers. After I got the three pieces cut down to their correct dimensions, I moved on to planing. I started first on a piece of that same mystery wood that I used on the beds last time. This one board was so badly twisted and warped and cupped that I had to place it on a sled with some shims to get it planed correctly. If you do this step without the assistance of the shims and the sled, then you just end up planing down the thickness of a really badly shaped board, meaning that it'll just retain the shape of the cupping instead of actually flattening it out like it should. Regardless, it took quite a few passes through the planer to get it to a workable state. But once it was done, I proceeded with the other pieces of oak to get them down to the correct thickness as well. I've had this planer for a few months now and I've gotten to use it on several projects. And I gotta say, it works really well. I've gotten good consistent results and I'm left with a really smooth surface. To get these boards down to the correct size, I first started with that badly twisted one by clamping it in the sled and running it through the table saw. I then ran the good clean edge along the fence to begin cutting it into strips. These strips were all cut to the same width and then two of each will be glued together to make posts for the four corners. I'll use that mystery wood for the back two corners and the oak for the front two. Once those were all done, I ripped down some more oak boards for the faces of the drawers. I'm cutting these to seven and three quarter inches wide, which is half an inch bigger than the opening for the drawers. Next, I began cutting everything down to the correct length using the compound miter saw. I first started with all the strips by cutting one and then using it to mark the others. One thing I continue to love about this saw is the shadow line that's cast by the two LEDs on either side of the blade. This really helps to alleviate any of the guesswork of where the blade is actually going to cut the wood. Another thing I really love about this saw is the sliding capability, which allows you to rip right through these almost 8 inch wide boards with ease. 
But the last things I really had to cut down were all the strips for the face frame. These strips were mainly cut to be one inch wide, with one piece being the exception. I had to make it one and one quarter inch to take up a little extra space on the bottom. Anyway, once they were all ripped down, I set up a stop block on the fence and just used a crosscut sled to cut them down to the correct length. Next, using the jig, I drilled some pocket holes into either end of each strip. Once the holes were all drilled, I began the assembly process by clamping the pieces together and driving in the screws. I first attached the two vertical side strips to the top, and then using the dividers for the small drawers as spacers, I attached the next horizontal runner into place. I repeated the same basic process to attach the rest of these runners as well. The main purpose for these pieces is to act as dividers for the drawers, while also holding things together from side to side, meaning that they're not really supporting any weight from the drawers themselves. Otherwise, I would have used more than just one pocket hole screw on either end. But this way will do the job just fine. For the bottom two strips, the openings weren't exactly the same as the other ones, so I had to make up the difference between the two measurements. It wasn't a big deal, it was just about 3 sixteenths off. I mounted those two pieces, and then went ahead and mounted the short vertical divider for the top two drawers. And then the frame was complete, or rather the first frame was complete. You see, I actually made an extra frame for the back as well, though I made that one out of 3 quarter inch plywood instead, but I didn't film it. The next step was to glue the skinny strips together to make the posts for the four corners. I did this by applying a rather copious amount of weld bond glue and then clamping it all together. And then I added a couple more clamps. And then a couple more. And then I wrapped some tape around it between all the clamps as well. If you couldn't tell, I wanted these posts to be nice and solid, which they definitely were. Once they were dry, I set up the dado stack and the table saw to cut a slot into each post. There will be two posts sandwiched around a piece of plywood that will act as one of two sides for the chest of drawers. After all these pieces were cut, there was one thing that I took note of. I really didn't need to do it this way. I could have easily accomplished basically the same thing by attaching one large strip and one slightly smaller strip together, and pretty much eliminating the need for this thinner inside strip. However, in the process of planning and working on things, sometimes I just get fixated on one way of doing something. And I think that was pretty much the case here. Oh well. Once all the dados were cut, I put a 3 8 round over on all the outside edges. I figured this step would be way easier to accomplish now before all these pieces were attached. Once that part was done, I applied a generous amount of glue to the inner slots on two of the posts. Then I slid a piece of plywood into place between the two posts and clamped it all together. With everything nice and tight, I drove in a bunch of brad nails to keep it secure. Then, I repeated the same process again for the other side. To assemble the frame to the sides, I applied glue to the inner strip on the side, and then clamped the frame into place. With the frame secure, I took my time and drove in brad nails one opening at a time to make sure everything was nice and sturdy. Then I repeated the same process for the other side, and again for the back frame. After that, I laid the whole chest on its side and pre-drilled and drove in at least one screw per opening. I'm not entirely sure that this step was completely necessary, but I figured it's better to be overdoing things rather than underdoing them, because the last thing I want is for this thing to fly apart sometime. Once I was satisfied with that, the next step was to begin installing all the drawer support. To help accomplish that, I put together a really simple jig to make sure that all the supports were positioned correctly. The supports themselves are just 2x4 scraps that I planed down to the correct thickness that I needed. You know, with this jig I thought I was pretty smart. I would just clamp it into place and it would hold the supports in the correct position. It wasn't until the last support was mounted that I realized that I didn't even need to clamp it into place. I could just lay it across the rails and it would accomplish the same thing. In other words, for the middle support between the two top drawers, I attached it using pocket hole screws. Once everything was assembled, I went over it all with the orbital sander to make it nice and smooth. I paid special attention to all the spots where the face frame strips were jointed together, just to help ensure a smooth transition between the pieces. I also made sure to go over the spots where the screws were driven through the side strips. And I was careful to sand out any saw marks that were left over on the outer posts. 
Finally, I gave a quick once over on the plywood surfaces. Next up, I started the assembly for the top of the chest. For this, I'm using a piece of plywood with trim strips on the edges. I actually wanted to panel up some solid oak for the top, but I didn't have any extra on hand, so I figured this was a good alternative. I applied some glue to the trim strip and then used some masking tape to hold it into place while I drove in some brat nails. I started with the front and then went on to repeat the same process with the sides. I allowed ample drying time and then sanded the top panel nice and smooth and went over all the outside edges with the roundover bit in the router. To attach the top into place, I clamped some spacers on the sides and then set it on to find the correct positioning. I clamped it down and then checked the square for all the corners to make sure everything looked good. I then pre-drilled some holes and drove in some screws to secure it. The next step was to round over all the outside edges on the drawer faces. So I popped in the 3 8 roundover bit and, you know, did that. I went ahead and sanded them all too, but I didn't film it because, let's be honest, that part's always boring. Anyway, with that all done, it was time to start on staining and finishing. The first step is to, well, actually wipe everything down with tack cloth to get all the dust off of it. But I didn't film that either, because seriously, how much footage do you want to see of me wiping down furniture? I mean, you're already getting to see me wiping down everything with the pre-stained conditioner, which always helps me achieve good, consistent results. It really helps the stain penetrate the wood in a very uniform way to help eliminate the potential for any spots or blotchiness. Since I'm once again trying to match existing furniture, I applied one coat of stain and only let it sit on there long enough to make it look like the other stuff. Then I wiped away all the excess and let it sit overnight to dry before starting on the polyurethane. For this, I once again used the same process that I have for all the other furniture that I've finished. For the first coat, it's a one-to-one -one mixture of polyurethane and mineral spirits. For the second coat, it's a 3 to 1 mixture, and finally for the third coat, it's just straight polyurethane. I let it dry for 4 hours in between coats, and then give it a light sanding with some 4 aught steel wool, and wipe away all of the dust using some tack cloth before applying the next coat. After the poly was dry, I began installing all the cabinet members of the drawer slides. I did this by using the same jig that I used before for all the supports. I installed the front two screws, and then moved the jig out of the way and got the back two and then repeated the same process for all the other cabinet members. Once those were done, I began installing all the drawer members of the slides. I marked the center line and then punched the spot where I wanted the screws and then drove them in. Unlike the drawers for the beds, I actually used washers on the screws this time. This was to prevent the tip of the screw from poking through the other side, which I had a slight issue with last time. Another thing I did differently this time was to take a 16th of an inch off the width for each drawer. The reason for this was because last time, even though the drawers fit, they were a little bit tight, so I figured I'd compensate for that. With the drawers installed, now I could finish up with the faces. For the top two faces, I found the exact center and then punched a mark for drilling. I drilled the hole out on the press, and then I held the face up and using spacers to position it correctly, I drove in a screw. I then clamped it into place to make sure it wouldn't move around and then drove in some screws from the inside. I then removed the center screw, drilled out the hole, pushed through the hardware for the drawer pull, and then screwed on the knob. For the larger drawer faces, I made a really simple jig to ensure that I had the correct placement for all the drawer pulls. I punched the marks, drilled the holes out on the press, and then held the face up the same way I did before using some spacers for positioning. I clamped on the face and then drove in some screws. Again, this is pretty much the same process that I use for the smaller drawers. And by using the combination of the jig to mark all the spots for the drawer pulls, and by using the spacers to correctly position all the faces, I was sure to get everything in exactly the right spot. And with that, this chest of drawers was complete. I am beyond thrilled with the results that I got on this piece. 
it actually came together exactly as I hoped it would. And I feel like it's the nicest piece of furniture that I've made so far. Working on this project certainly taught me a lot, but one thing in particular. No matter how difficult a project may seem at the beginning, if you take a systematic approach to it and break it down to work on it one section at a time, it makes it so much easier. And when everything comes together, you're left with an extremely gratifying result and an accomplishment that you can be proud of. Well, like I said, I'm pretty thrilled with the results. And although I was nervous about it, and there are a couple things that I would change if I had to do it over again, I really couldn't be happier with how it turned out. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful in some way. And if you feel compelled, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.